Hello everybody, my name is Hamid Abdel Samad and I've been studying Islam for more than 40 years from three different perspectives. Firstly, from the conservative perspective of my father who was an Imam in Egypt. Secondly, from the perspective of political Islam since I was a member of the Muslim Brotherhood when I was a student in Cairo. And thirdly, from a historical, critical, humanistic point of view of an academic since I was teaching Islamic history in two German universities. I wrote a number of books on Islam, which you can find translated into 11 languages. I want to talk to you today about the term Islamophobia. I want to show you that this term is not only wrong, but also dangerous. Firstly, it's wrong because it makes you feel that Muslims and Islam are the same thing. And to protect Muslims, you need to protect or defend their religion as well. Muslims are human beings and have individual human rights and they deserve to be protected by the law. While Islam is a mixture of ideas, some of which are good ideas and some are very bad ideas that can and must be criticized. There is no problem at all to criticize the idea of dividing the world in believers and unbelievers, which Islam does, um, or the idea that a man can beat his wife to discipline her, or the concept that those who do not believe in God will end up burning in eternal hell, or the notion that the best thing a Muslim can do is to die while fighting against the unbelievers. Someone who criticizes these ideas or even afraid of them is not suffering from a phobia, which is an irrational fear, but he is someone who has common sense and believes in the values of freedom and tolerance and maybe he learned something from history. How could we then describe someone who refuses the message of hatred as a bigot? How could we call someone intolerant just because he refuses intolerance? Again, the term Islamophobia is not only wrong, but also dangerous. Firstly, it doesn't help Muslims against hatred and discrimination, but gives the impression that they want to limit freedom of speech and want to apply blasphemy laws in the West again. And that increases hatred. Secondly, this term helps supporters of political Islam and militant Islam to spread their ideology in the West without being held accountable. Because once you criticize them, you will be called Islamophobic. Thirdly, this term gives the impression that young Muslims get radicalized only because of racism and Islamophobia and not the other way around, which makes radicals only victims who are defending themselves. Fourthly, this term intimidates journalists and academics and politicians who have critical views about the theology of violence in Islam. In a diverse society, opinions need to be diverse as well. But unfortunately, the more our society gets diverse, the more affirmative and unified opinions become. This is the beginning of the end of democracy. The reality is Islam has serious problems and the least among those problems is what Western people think about Islam. Islam has a problem with violence, rights of minority, with women's rights, children's rights, animals' rights. It has a problem with the world because it doesn't want to be a part of the world, but it wants to rule it. And just as Christianity in the Middle Ages needed criticism to be reformed, Islam badly needs criticism today to change. Those who use the term Islamophobia to describe the criticism support the Muslim fanatics who refuse reforms and stab reformers in the back. When a Christian priest refuses to perform a marriage ceremony for a homosexual couple, leftist liberals make a big deal out of it. But do we hear from them if a Muslim Imam does the same? Imagine a priest forbids Christians to congratulate Muslims for their religious feasts. What would liberals call that? Bigotry and discrimination, right? What 
if a Muslim Imam would say exactly the same thing. They would just call it cultural difference. These double standards show why the term Islamophobia is wrong. Only when it comes to Islam, liberal people stop defending genuine liberal values like freedom of speech, freedom to criticize religion, sexual freedom, the right of children to grow up without fear, women's rights and the rights of homosexuals. It's more than disturbing when liberals help intolerant people to build their intolerant infrastructure in the West in the name of tolerance. Now if you want to silence your opponent, just call him Islamophobic. It's a checkmate argument because it makes the critic look immoral and even criminal so that a discussion becomes unneeded. Just like Ben Affleck once tried to do with Sam Harris when they were discussing Islam. For the Western advocates of Islam, I want to say stop. Stop using this term Islamophobia. Every human being has the right to criticize religion or any ideology. If you want to protect Muslims, don't build a fence around their religion, but encourage them to break down the walls of their culture. Encourage them to practice self-criticism and embrace enlightenment and freedom. Not only the freedom of faith, but also the emancipation from the tight patriarchal system. A doctor never helps his patient when he avoids talking about their disease. Encourage young Muslim women not only to fight for the right to wear the hijab, but also to emancipate themselves from the ideology behind the hijab and from the hypocrite masculine society. Many girls are held hostage by their own families. They can't decide what to wear or whom to love. They suffer from intimidation and domestic violence. These are the real victims that desperately need your help. What a shame when we help the oppressors and not the victims and then call it tolerance. What a shame to call those who criticize exactly this Islamophobic. Stop giving those who hate the West and its values a safe harbor in the name of liberal values. To the young Muslims who live in the West, I want to say, I know that some of you face daily experiences of discrimination. It's tough and tiresome. But identifying with the role of the victim is never the solution. You need self-confidence and strength, not whining and blaming. Unlike in the Muslim countries, the law in the West is on your side as an individual. You have the chance to get the best education and you have the best gift a country can offer an immigrant, freedom and enlightenment. One of the greatest achievements of enlightenment is that it teaches us that no one has to remain caught in the prisons of their national or religious backgrounds. We can take a distance from our origin to see it clearer. Use this freedom to develop yourself and to grow, not to defend an old system that holds you hostage. Face the real problem instead of creating phantom enemies. And always remember, you are an individual, not a member of the tribe. And in fact, you can change the tribe. You are not a victim unless you choose to be one.